Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Robin for the people and kids. I'm the science educator. And I just couldn't let our celebration of Black History Month go by without reading you this absolutely marvelous book. It's called Counting on Catherine, and it's all about Katherine Johnson. So sit back, relax, here we go. So my book is Counting on Catherine, How Katherine Johnson Saved Apollo 13, and it's by Helene Becker. Catherine loved to count. She counted the steps on the road, the steps to church, the number of dishes and spoons she washed in the bright white sink. Catherine's, sorry, the only thing she didn't count were the stars in the sky. Only a fool, she thought, would try that. Even so, the star sparkled and sparked her imagination. What was out there? Catherine yearned to know as much as she could about numbers, about the universe, about everything. Look at Catherine looking out her window. Catherine's boundless curiosity turned her into a star student. She was so bright, she skipped three whole grades. She catapulted right past her brother. He wasn't very happy about that. Here's Catherine in school. By the time she turned 10, Catherine was ready for high school. But back then, America was legally segregated by race. Her town's high school didn't admit black students of any age. Well, Catherine burned with fury. She wanted more than anything to keep on learning. There was still so much to know. Count on me, Catherine's father told her. By working day and night, he earned enough money to move the family to a new town with a black high school. That's difficult to turn. Catherine loved high school. She was good at every subject, but math was still her favorite. She dreamt of becoming a research mathematician, making discoveries about number patterns that were the foundation of our universe. These days, there were no jobs as research mathematicians for women. In those days, professions most available to them were teaching and nursing. So Catherine became an elementary school teacher. She liked her job and she loved her students, but she never dreamt, stopped dreaming of exploring numbers. In the 1950s, the U.S. government's National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics, NACA, hired thousands of new employees. It even started hiring Black women as mathematicians. Well, Catherine heard about the mathematician jobs and her heart raced with excitement. Perhaps her dream would come true after all. But when she applied for one of the positions, she was told it was already filled. Catherine had to wait a whole year until new spots opened up, but her patience paid off and she got the job. A few years later, the Soviet Union sent a space rocket ship up, launching a space race with, NASA, with the United States. NACA was rolled into a new space agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration that we know as NASA today. Well, Catherine now found herself at the heart of America's space program. She worked as a computer. Electri electronic computers in those days weren't used. They used people. And she calculated long series of numbers. All the computers were women. 
They were given the tasks that men thought were boring and unimportant. But that didn't bother our Catherine. She knew without her contributions, a spaceship couldn't reach its destination, nor safely return to Earth. All these women are working on things that our computers today would do, but not back then. Well, here's why. Sending a rocket ship into space is like throwing a ball into the air. At first, the force of the throw sends the ball up, 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 up in the air. But as the energy runs out, the ball's path curves back toward the ground. And when it lands, it depends on what angle it was thrown and how high and how fast it flew, because math is a kind of language. Catherine could ask those questions. How high would the rocket ship go? And how fast could it travel? using numbers, and numbers would provide an all-important answer. Where would it land? To find out, Catherine plotted the numbers she calculated on a graph. And when she joined the points together, they formed a curved line. And at one end of that line, the Earth was at the time at which the rocket ship was launched. And at the other was where the Earth would be when the rocket ship landed. Catherine, reputation for accuracy and strong leadership skills, she was also known for asking plenty of questions, got her promoted to Project Mercury, a new program designed to send the first American astronauts up in space. Mercury's missions were going to be very dangerous, so dangerous that even the Project Star astronaut refused to fly unless Catherine herself okayed the numbers. You can count on me, she said. So John Glenn's spacecraft, Friendship 7, orbited the Earth three times and returned safely to Earth. And John Glenn became a national hero. Catherine was promoted again, and now she was asked to calculate the flight paths for Project Apollo the first flights going to the moon. Count on me, she said. And on July 20th, 1969, the Apollo 11 astronauts walked on the moon and their feet were celebrated around the world. More triumphs followed. Apollo 12 rocketed to the moon in November, 1969. And there was the astronaut planting the flag on the moon. Apollo 13 was launched on April 11th, 1970. But on the third day of Apollo 13's flight, the worst thing happened. There was an explosion in space. Could the crippled spaceship make it to the moon? And if it didn't, would it be able to get back to Earth? The three astronauts on board were in grave or really big peril, danger. Commander Jim Lovell told Mission Control, Houston, we've got a problem. Who's going to come to the rescue? Wait till you see. Well, back on Earth, Katherine Johnson got a phone call. Her flight path calculations would have to be done all over again and perfectly. It would be the toughest challenge of her life. Katherine told Mission Control, you can count on me. And she rolled up her sleeves, took a deep breath, and began doing the difficult math. She worked hard and fast, and a few hours later, Catherine's calculations were finished. The flight path to return to Earth would take the ship around the far side of the moon, and from there, the moon's gravity would act like a slingshot to zing it back to Earth. To get home, the crew of Apollo 13 would have to follow Catherine's course exactly by burning fuel off at precise intervals. An interval is a, small, is a period of time. If the astronauts made a mistake, the spacecraft would drift through space forever. That is not very good, right? So Catherine waited anxiously to hear the astronauts report. And finally, it crackled over the loudspeakers. We've got it! And Apollo 13, is back on track.
Well, Katherine Johnson had done it. She brought Apollo 13 back home safely. She was no longer the kid who dreamed of what lay beyond the stars. She was now a star herself. And here are some of Catherine's calculations. So she loved math. And by studying mathematics, she helped save a crew of three astronauts, getting them back to Earth safely. I hope you enjoyed the story. And I just want to show you this one picture that I have at the side. That but here are women of color, pioneers and in innovations of NASA. So enjoy. And if you want to work for NASA, you work hard on your homework, do well in school, ask plenty of questions. And who knows, maybe you'll be the first person on Mars. Enjoy. Bye.